Welcome back to Retro Tech. I'm Steve. Today we're going to be looking at another one of my uh, Sony PVMs. This is a Sony PVM 1953MD. And the Sony 1953MD is part of the 1950 series monitors. These came out in the mid 90s. They are most of the time going to be 600 TV line monitors. And this came out right after the 1940 series, 1944, 1943, and those other monitors. And the real jump for this monitor was it was the first monitor that had the on-screen menu adjustments. So today, let's go through the menu adjustments. Let's go through the monitor a little bit more. Uh, these adjustments and this monitor is nearly identical to any of the uh, 14M2s or 20M2s, they use nearly the same um, menus until they got to the L series, then it changed up when the 20L2s and the 20L5s. But uh, this one, again, is represents that first on-screen menu so you didn't have to get inside your monitor to make any of your uh, geoma geometry adjustments. So let's go and look at the back of this monitor a little bit more. This particular PVM has been in storage for some while and has not been turned on for a while. I wanted to see how it would look so I figured I'd feature it in this episode. It's still got cobwebs and everything on it. I wanted to look at the back of the monitor here real quick just in case you're brand new to PVMs and you're, not and you're having trouble hooking up your monitor. If you have a 1953MD or a 20M2, it should look almost identical to this on the back. Um, the thing that makes these most desirable is they have a separate, they have two different inputs down here, a line A and a line B, and those lines can be either component or RGB. So you can switch, you can make them both component, you can make one component, one RGB, and um, that's it. Let's take a brief look at the connectors. I have an RGB SCART input in here. And it has these nice BNC connectors that are just going to go in here on the end lines and just connect. I have them connected to the bottom input. There is no output for daisy chaining on the bottom input, but all the other inputs have an output to daisy chain to a second monitor. I use these connectors if I'm using the onboard speaker. It lets me put the stereo audio and just put it together in one nice connector and it goes right in there and then you don't have any sound loss. I want to make one note about B and C connectors because if you're going to use, you're probably not going to use, uh, you're going to have an RCA cable for something like composite or for component. And a lot of times people will buy the cheapest B and C connectors off of eBay which look like this. You wouldn't know anything from looking at it. I think it looks like it's pretty good, but it's actually complete junk. You have to get ones that are like this that are much higher quality and they make a nice tight fit for your RCA cable. The problem is with the cheap ones the cables slide around in there and don't make good contact your grounding gets lost and sometimes your signal will just go out you'll lose colors and you'll think you're having an issue and it's all because of this cheap BNC connector so make sure you go for the more expensive BNC connector and it's only a couple dollars more, but it's definitely worth it. I recommend using as many of these inputs as you want. Um, again, this one has a composite line A, an S-video line B, a switchable um, line A and line B for RGB and component, and then our power input. All right, so I'm back to the front of the monitor and all I've simply done is powered it on by pushing in the power button. There is no video signal going into it yet and this is one of those differences we talked about where they added the menu. So you don't have to have anything plugged into this monitor. You can press this menu button right down here towards the bottom of the screen. It's right here and it pulls up your menu. And this is a very limited menu. This has just color temperature and some other preset configs. You can, uh, the one thing useful on this is the color temperature. You have a choice here of doing a custom color or these two preset color conditions. And if you actually have a 20M2, it'll have a third color. 
that's a preset. And those are basically almost like a color palette for your monitor. I'm sorry for any blanking in this video. It's not showing up on the screen. That's just the way the CRT will react with the camera. So you'll have to get kind of past that. But that's how you do that. So if you press menu again, it takes you back. And then your other button, it says here is enter for select and up and down to change. Well, you can see here, this doesn't look like anything that impressive, right? Because we're not really able to get any to any good settings. Well, to change that, I'm going to push menu and pull up our regular menu. To access the sub-menu with the good features, you have to press the DGOS button and the menu, uh, I'm sorry, not the menu button, the uh, enter button right under the menu. Press them simultaneously together with the menu drawn up, and it's going to give you, it's going to throw you into some kind of thing where you see up here where it says it, it's, it's in a random setting, okay? This is the sub-menus. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to press the menu button and get all the way to this says number one. So to scroll through this menu set, you need to remember just to use the menu and enter. And that's what you goes through each different setting and scroll through the setting. And then to make an adjustment on the setting, you have to press up or down once you kick, once you select your setting. I'll go through some settings and we'll show you what they do. I've loaded up my 240p test suite again and here is uh, the grid screen from that. I hope you can still see everything on there with the grid. I'm going to try to keep this all together. But the first 19 categories on this sub menu are going to deal mostly with your geometry settings. Actually this monitor only it's only going to be used to setting number 17. Sometimes you'll have 19 settings for geometry and um, it's not really a big deal. But anything over that you're starting to get into other settings. Let's go through the first part that's just the settings for the physical geometry on the regular settings. There's one thing you need to notice when you're scrolling through here and looking at these menus. Do you notice how this part it says it says my um, what I'm adjusting horizontal frequency which is an adjustment for geometry but up here it says NOR 50 and this is what our setting is right now default or defined I'm sorry so what's important here is this 50 this is our uh, signal this is 50 Hertz so this is actually a PAL setting and won't matter on this setup I've got right here because I'm actually using NTSC so you need to match the category you want to change on here to the correct uh, 50 or 60 depending on what region you're in again I'm in America so I'm gonna have to go to a different region and you can see I have to go all the way to the fourth setting where I finally get another horizontal frequency now with 60 this one will adjust on my screen so let's just go ahead and show you what this first adjustment does. Horizontal frequency, you're going to press up and down on your thing here. And you can see how that kind of does a shuddering effect left to right. And it's almost like the um, horizontal center on your screen. But you got to remember that horizontal frequency, you want to try to get that as close to center as possible. And, um, and then also video phase. Video phase is a smoother transition. So... That's the one you really want to kind of lock in your exact center with and adjust more on video phase than, video, than horizontal frequency. But you can use them both together, horizontal frequency and video phase, to change the horizontal centerness of your picture. Now, if you make an adjustment on here and you don't like it, you don't have to keep it. You can actually turn the power of the monitor off and it'll go back to whatever setting it was saved with. Um, to get this menu off your screen, put we're on component input B using RGB. So if I push the input, it toggles whether that menu is being shown or not. See, so if you're done with it, if you just want to use a setting for temporary, you can do it like that. However, 
Um, if you're squishing through them and uh, you know want it to go away for a second, that's how you do it. And then if you want to save your setting, if you get a setting you really like and you actually want to save it, you need to come down here and press degauss. And all of a sudden you'll see text come over here that says write. And it's basically, so again, degauss, it says write. And it's like asking you if you want to write that to memory. You press write again and you'll see this little asterisk pop up. That means you've written, you've written that, uh, that setting to your memory and now it's going to be saved in there every time you start the monitor. The next size in the setting is your vertical size and again that is 60 the right setting for me so you can see that's just going to make my screen size increase or decrease vertically and again when I get to where I want it I can hit right and save that entry when you're searching through this and you forget, let's say, what the def uh, defined setting was, do you see this shape that showed up here, which is almost an arrow, white arrow? That shows you the setting that's written to memory currently. And that's the one, so if, you, if you're like, I don't remember where I was or where I started, that'll tell you where you're started, no matter where you go. So if I go up, it goes away, or down, it goes away, but if I hit back on that number, that's my setting. Let's go to the next setting, which is video center. And there is no defined hertz, 50 or 60 hertz on this. This is changed on either one. And that's just like horizontal center. That actually changes your center. It doesn't change your size. It changes your center shift on your screen. Eight is uh, horizontal size, makes it bigger or smaller. Let's make it a little smaller. And then Now, after you get past those horizontal and vertical shift geometry settings, you're getting into the uh, pin cushion adjustment. The first one you'll come to is pin phase. Let me show you what happens when you start adjusting pin phase. Pin phase basically just, you can see how your screen either comes forward or backwards. It's like it's tilting on the center axis. It's tilting forward or backwards where the bottom part of the screen starts to come for you and the top goes back or vice versa. Uh, that's what pin phase does. And you can adjust that if your screen looks like you're getting too much picture up top and too little on the bottom or vice versa. The next one is pin amp. Okay, And anything that doesn't have a 50 or 60 beside it can work for either formats. So there's no defined uh, whatever uh, uh, region on these settings. The next one's pin amp. Pin amp you can see is that setting that, that actually can make your screen kind of look like a globe effect and round your corners or do the opposite and expand your corners out to where it looks like that. The uh, point of that is again just to get your corners kind of lined up and good to go. These are good. Uh, lower pin amp is your next setting and that's just instead of adjusting both sides it's only going to focus on the bottom half and be a little bit more defined so if one side looks like it needs a little bit more adjustment than the top does than the bottom UL pin actually just means upper pin so I'm sorry upper pin so again that's just adjusting that upper pin making it go out or in and out or in The next one is called Sexy. Now, Sexy is kind of a goofy name for it, but what it does is it's just going to outstretch the center line. Pay attention to this center line here. It's going to expand it, so if you end up with a, a crooked corner or, you know, it doesn't look proportionally well in the middle of your picture, that's what Sexy does. I'm going to expand that way out so maybe you can kind of see. Look over here how that adjustment changes just that center and that's just another little geometry feature they've added in case there's something wrong with the center of your monitor. The next setting I'm going to focus on is called, you'll see here number 14 on my menu, is vertical linearity. You want to switch over to this linearity screen on your test suite. That's the best thing to use when you're checking your linearity. 
And linearity is just going to shift the picture a little bit vertically. It's going to, um, you can see it, it basically uh, changes the shapes on these circles. So the goal of your linearity adjustment is going to be just, just make those circles, try to get all five of them as circular as possible. You don't really want them to be wonky or oval shaped. It's kind of like if I go down on this setting, these look really round but start to get funny towards this side and it gets really wonky down here. This adjustment is to just try to help you get those circles nice and round. The next is vertical bow and these are more that are just grid related more than anything. Vertical bow you can see, look at my top of my screen really. See how it just shifts that vertically. So again, the best advice when you're using these things, you're going to have to toy with these settings and see just what looks right. It's really about what looks good to your eye on these geometry settings from this menu. So the vertical bow, you can see, that's just shifting that line, those lines, kind of like that a little bit. So we're about to run out of settings here. This is lower V-bow. That just affects the lower tilt and bow and then our last one is our vertical angle which that's the whole screen you can see how the whole screen kind of shifts if our screen doesn't look straight all together that's a good way to straighten it up again these settings can be quite overwhelming that's pretty much all there is for the uh, geometry settings in the most of these menus um, if you keep going beyond that, these menus are loaded with settings. After that, you get to these things like, for example, U slash S. That stands for underscan mode. So you can go in here and um, find the correct find the correct region. And you can do the geometry settings not only for your normal mode, but for your underscan mode. See? You can change that. You can also do the same. For your overscan mode, see this OS. So you just keep going through there. So all those are pertaining to geometry. You've got geometry of the regular screen first, geometry of the uh, underscan, geometry of the overscan. If you don't have overscan or underscan or monitor, it will just skip past these features. Then you start getting into these uh, phase coma levels, and maybe we can go through this a little bit more. But these are uh, the color settings for the most part, the phase, the colors, and the color temperature settings. You can change the gains on there. That's pretty much what the most of it is. There are some other settings that help with the system in here, but we will have to cover them in another video. Uh, but for the most part, once you get past about the 25th or 6th setting after that operate or overscan, uh, this one it's a number 30. So that's about all the geometry settings that you're going to want to uh, mess with. I really appreciate you taking the special time to uh, uh, talk about the geometry, and I hope you learned a little bit about the settings and the settings menu. Uh, just again, if you want to write your data, you press your DGOS button twice. If you need your setting line to go away, you press the input that you're on again off, and you're ready to go. And that way, if, you, um, if you're not comfortable with your settings, uh, you can keep adjusting them. You can always not write what happened and restart. Um, but it's, uh, it's something that just involves a lot of playing around with to get the screen to look the way that you really want it to. Thanks again, and look for more episodes from Retro Tech. I will talk more about this monitor in the future. And please leave any comments if there's anything that I didn't cover in this video that you'd like to know more about on the specific geometry settings for this style of monitor.